This video will get you started with Adobe Premiere Pro as fast as possible. However, keep in mind that video editing takes years to master. We've got a very in-depth course for beginners and advanced users, which is the best way to learn Premiere inside out. Link in the description down below, but for now, let's get you kicked off with the fundamentals in 15 minutes. All right, this is the first thing you see when you launch Premiere Pro. From here, click on New Project. Now, on the top left, you can give it a name, for example, My Edits. Then with this menu, you you can choose the location of your Premiere file. Now you can also use this window to import your footage, but you can import it later as well. So let's skip it for now. Next, click on Create, and here we go. This is your workspace, and what you can see here are different panels. They all have their own functionality, and that will be explained throughout the video. And you can drag these windows to make them bigger or smaller. You can move them around and place them somewhere different, or you can close them by right-clicking on top and choosing Close Panel. So you can very easily create a custom workspace. Now, if you go to the window menu on top, you can find all the available panels. Depending on what task that you're doing, you want to enable or disable certain panels. And if you messed up your workspace, you can reset it by going to workspaces and then reset to saved layout. It's that simple. Now, let's take a look at the project window, which is actually the heart of Premiere Pro. This is where we import all of our files, such as videos, pictures, music, and sound effects. Effects. You can do that by double clicking inside. This will open up the import window. But what I like to do is simply just drag and drop my files into that project window. And there you go. Now I gotta admit it's kind of messy. So we need to organize it. To do that, we can create some folders or bins. Click the bin button and call it video, for example. Then drag all the video files into that folder. Create another one for your pictures, music, and your sound effects. That's a lot better now. And now we're ready to start editing. Now you might be familiar with a timeline where you put your footage in. Now in Premiere, such a timeline is called a sequence. And to create one, click the new item button, then choose sequence. And here you can choose a preset with specific settings, such as the resolution and the frame rate that you want your final video to be. Now, if this is too overwhelming, we can do something else. Now just close this window and go to the project window and then grab one of your videos and just simply drag and drop that into the new item button. This will create a sequence or timeline Line with the exact same settings of that video, which in most cases is what you want. You can also see the sequence file in the project window now. You can rename it, just simply select it and hit enter on your keyboard. Then call it My Edit, for instance. Now you can actually keep doing that and create multiple sequences. If we open up a second one, you can see that we have a tap on top of the timeline to switch between the two sequences. But for now, let's just do it with one. Now, playing back your footage, obviously just press the play bar. You can then see your video playing back in the program monitor, which is the one here on the right. So you can also use this timeline here to scrub through your video. And oh, by the way, because we created a sequence from an existing clip, it has automatically been added in the timeline. But maybe we don't need that clip, so you can remove it if you like so. The source monitor on the left previews something else. If you double click a video in the project window, the footage will be shown in there. That's why it's called the source monitor. Now, it doesn't have anything to do with the timeline or the program monitor, but then why do we use this? Well, with the source monitor, you can scrub through the video to find a specific part that you need. You can set an endpoint by pressing the I button on your keyboard, then move the playhead to the end of your desired selection and press the O button to set an out point. We basically just made a selection of the parts that we want to use. Now you can just simply drag the video into the timeline. This won't delete the rest. You can still trim the clip longer or shorter in the timeline. All right, let's double click another video. Now move back to the source monitor and make another selection. Again, drag it in a timeline like this. You can also take multiple selections from the same clip. So this is a great way to look for all the actions that you want to use in your edits and bring that into the timeline. Now, the timeline is a little bit small. So to zoom in on your clips, you can use the scroll bars at the bottom and the sides. You can also use Alt plus scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if you stand on the video track column, you can make the track itself bigger and see the thumbnails of the clips or the audio waveforms. Next, we're going to fine tune the edit. It. We can move the clips around, snap them together, and if you want to cut a clip in two, you need to select the razor tool in the toolbar. Now just click on a clip to set a cut. Choose the selection tool again, and there you go. If you put a video on top of another one, so in track number two, Premiere will show you the top one. It's like laying two pieces of paper on top of each other. You will only see the first one, obviously. Now it's not necessary to use more than one video track. Now just start with one, and you'll notice that the more familiar you get with Premiere, the more you 
you start to use multiple tracks. Oftentimes, this is used when showing B-roll on top of an interview. And let's say that you don't want to see the B-roll, then you can just use the visibility toggle on the left to disable a video track. That way, you can see the clips from the video track underneath. Now, B-roll is not always easy to shoot yourself, especially when you're under time pressure. That's why I love a very specific plugin that turns Premiere Pro into a beast editor. It beholds the Storyblocks plugin. They're sponsoring today's video and you can basically type in what type of video that you need and click search. Then a list of a million high quality royalty free stock assets will appear, all in HD or 4K resolution. And you can download an unlimited amount of those. With a folder selected in the project window, choose an asset that you want to download and look at that, the video will appear right inside that folder. There is no need to leave Premiere anymore. Videos like drone shots, nature videos, animal close-ups, whatever you need to make your content better. Don't know how to make awesome text animations? Well, just browse through thousands of presets that are super easy to use in just a few clicks. But what about copyright and licensing? Well, don't even think about that, guys. Storyblocks will take care of that. You can use anything you download in your social media videos, even if they are monetized. On other stock websites, you need to pay an expensive price per download, but with Storyblocks, you will get everything for one set price that you can pay monthly or annually. I'm also very proud to have my own landing page, my own footage from travel videos, car crashes, and other projects are actually there for you to download. So definitely go and check it out, guys. Now, I've been using Storyblocks for years and I can truly recommend it to any creative. So take back your own creative control with Storyblocks Unlimited Royalty Free Stock Library and tools today by going to storyblocks.com forward slash Premiere Basics or just simply click the first link in the description down below. And now let's go back to Premiere. Now, what if you're importing a video but the audio doesn't come with it? That's probably because you accidentally disabled the audio track. Now to re-enable it, simply make sure that the input is active. By the way, the same thing can happen for the input of your video track as well. Drag the footage in the timeline and voila, everything is there. So this is how basic editing works in Premiere. You open a source file, drag a selection in a timeline, move and trim clips around. Now let's take a look at some fun things that we can do like making a clip go faster. You can easily do that by right clicking on the desired clip and choosing speed and duration. Here simply increase the percentage. The, the higher you put it, the faster it will play. To slow down the clip, just type in a lower percentage. If you want, you can also reverse the video to make it play backwards. But what if I want this video to fit in between these two other clips by making it go faster? Oh, well, we don't know the exact percentage that the clip has to be. That's where the rate stretch tool comes in. You can find it again in the toolbar. If you drag your clip longer or smaller, you're actually stretching it. In other words, you're speeding it up or slowing it down. That way you can make it fit in between any other clip. All right, it's going good, guys. Next, let's take a look at the text tool in the toolbar. Move to the program monitor and simply click. Now you can type in some text. Taking back the selection tool, we can then move the text around in the program monitor. You also notice that a new graphics layer has been added to the timeline. This is your text and we can place that on top of a video as it is now. Or we can put it in an empty space so that it doesn't have a background. All right, it's time to customize the text and to do that, we can go to the window menu on top and find the essential graphics panel. Once it's open, you will see controls that you can use to scale the text or reposition it, perhaps use a, a different font, you can change the color and so on. You know, these are probably things that you're familiar with, so definitely play around with these settings. Now, the text is still boring. I want to move it around a little bit. For that, we need to locate the properties. You see, every clip in a timeline has a bunch of properties, or in other words, effect controls. If you select any clip, you will find these properties back in the effects controls. From here, we can scale the clip, reposition it, rotate it, and whatnot. And if we select the graphics layer, we get the same options. And we can use these properties to create an animation as well. Now, I want this text to move from left to right, which is done using the position property. To do that, we're going to create keyframes, which is done on the clip's timeline. If you cannot see it, you're going to have to expand the timeline by clicking on the little arrow here on top. What we see here is a mini timeline of only the clip that is selected. First, we need to choose a starting point, which is going to be on the left. Next to the property, you can see a little stopwatch icon. Every property has one of those, which means that we can basically animate everything. If you click on it, it will create a keyframe. This will register the location of the text on a specific moment in time. Now, if we want the text to move to the right, we need to move further in time using the playhead on top. They just adjust the horizontal position of the text to the end, and that will automatically create another keyframe because
because the stopwatch is active. And here you go. Now the text will move from point A to point B. And if you want to make it move faster, simply move the keyframes closer to each other. This will give the text less time to travel from A to B. And now that you know how to animate, it's time to check out some effects. Let's head over to the effects library. Here you can find some folders with a bunch of stuff inside. Expands the video effects folder. And then let's go for the blur and sharpness folder. Here we can find the Gaussian blur effect. Let's drag that to the video. Now let's go back to the effects control because every effect that you put onto a clip will also appear here in the effects controls. Now every effect has its own different properties and for the Gaussian blur we can increase the blurriness to make it blurry of course. And as you can see there's also a stopwatch icon in front of the blurriness property. Let's say that we want to create a transition where the video goes from blurry to sharp. Now to do that move the playhead to the first frame of the video. Then increase the blurriness until nothing is visible. Click the stopwatch icon to create a keyframe and go to the playheads. Now move further in time and set the blurriness to zero. And now you have a simple transition. Again, if you want to make it play faster, simply drag the keyframes closer to each other. It is that simple. Now, did you know that transitions play a big role in creating smooth edits? Well, in the effects window, you can actually find a lot of them. Look for the video transitions folder and expand it. Scroll down until you see the slide folder. Drag the push transition in between two clips in a timeline. And as you can see, this creates a transition. You can actually make the transition go faster or slower by dragging it longer or shorter. Oh, and a quick tip. If you want to add a fade in transition, select the start of a clip and press Ctrl plus D on your keyboard. That will apply the default transition to your clip, which is the dissolve. All right, you're doing so awesome, guys. All right, next up, color grading. Now, Premiere's color grading tools are called Lumetri or Lumetri. I don't know. Now, to open it up, go to Window and find the Lumetri color panel. There you go. Here you can find the basic controls like the temperature, tint, saturation, and other controls like exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, and so on. Now, I actually have an entire course where we go super in-depth about color grading in Premiere Pro, but first, I highly recommend checking out the Premiere Pro beginner and advanced courses. That way, you'll be ready to handle the Lumetri course. Now, let's move on to audio. Processing audio is just as important as video. If you want to change the volume of an audio clip, you can do that by dragging down the gain curve on the clip itself. Another way to turn your audio up or down is by right-clicking on your clip and and then choosing gain. If you type in minus six decibels, for example, the audio will go down six decibels. I mean, decibels. <laughs> if you type in minus six, the audio will be louder, obviously. I'm laughing because the writer of this tutorial was mentioning to me that I had to say decibels instead of decibels. <laughs> I still said it. All right, so now you can find a lot of audio effects in the effects panel, but let me make it easier for you. You don't need them, guys. Let's head over to the window and find essential sounds. This will open up a super easy to use panel to mix your audio. You know, just select the type of audio that you're working on and boom, you can play around with reverb, panning, volume, and so much more. Now you're done editing a video and you want to save it, of course. Now in Premiere, you can't just hit Ctrl S and upload it to YouTube. Premiere needs to do something called exporting or rendering your video. Now during the export process, Premiere will put your entire edit together and burn it into one video file. But how do we export the video, Jordi? Well, let me explain. Explain. On top, click on export. Here you can find a whole bunch of stuff that might look very overwhelming, but trust me, I'll make it easy for you guys. First of all, make sure that the range of your video is set to the entire source. Otherwise, Premiere might only export a part of your edit. Then you want to give it a name, for example, My Edits. Here you can choose the location of your exported file. This can be anywhere on your computer. And then the next setting is extremely important. With the export preset, you will decide the quality of your exported video. And at the bottom, you will find two presets, YouTube 1080p and YouTube 4K. Depending on the quality of your video, you want to choose one of these. That way, your video will look perfect for YouTube or to share it with your friends. And it also won't eat up your hard drive because of its file size. This is a great preset that we use all the time. So there's no need to go into all the detailed settings. That is for later when you are more familiar with Premiere Pro. You got a very solid foundation of Premiere now. But 
but there is so much more to learn and it can be very frustrating at times. So definitely check out my beginner and advanced course bundle, which guides you step by step through the entire process with exercises and hands on lessons. Tens of thousands of people have already taken the course and the reviews have been overwhelmingly positive. So go check out the link in the description down below, guys, and I hope to see you in my course. Thanks for watching and as always, stay creative.